Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. As the prophetic plan of God unfolds, we'll comment on current events. Our first item, the Pentagon is cutting its nuclear missile program and is seeking to justify its decision. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin faced a barrage of questions, but the Secretary assured his audience that, quote, our inventory of nuclear weapons is significant, close quotes. Under President Trump's leadership, the military made a decision in 2018 to develop a new nuclear-armed sea-launched cruise missile with a focus on the threat from Russia. But the Biden administration said in its review of the sea-launched missile that the program was unnecessary. The United States already has, quote, the means to deter limited nuclear use. Now, what, we ask, has happened to the MAD doctrine? That stands for Mutually Assured Destruction. Russian state TV has claimed that Russia can survive a nuclear exchange with America. Russia currently has a well-developed nuclear shelter program. America's act of cutting down on its ability for a devastating retaliatory strike has emboldened Russia to take us out. Now, maybe that's why America is not mentioned in Bible prophecy. Under the Biden administration, we are blown into non-existence. For every American, national defense is no laughing matter, but it is fast becoming a weeping matter. Friends, are you prepared for eternity? Where will you spend eternity? Jesus asked the right question. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? We can rephrase the question a bit. For what shall it profit a man if there is no world to gain and he lose his own soul? Now moving on, President Biden and Dylan Mulvaney. We'll talk about them a bit, but can you believe it? The President of the United States of America meeting with a man dressed as a woman. Mulvaney asked the president, Mr. President, do you think states should have the right to ban gender-affirming health care? Now, for those in our viewing audience who are unaware of the medical euphemisms currently in practice, gender-affirming health care consists of a number of treatments, including pumping little kids full of cross-sex hormones and or puberty blockers, painful surgeries, and building fake vaginas. The president gave a slight smile and with a twinkle in his eyes said, I don't think that any state or anybody should have the right to restrict gender-affirming health care. As a moral question and as a legal question, said the president, I just think it is wrong. So said Mr. Biden. Mr. Biden represents the best of the Democrat Party. Of course, he's the president of the United States. The Democrat Party claims to be the party of science, so let's think about this a bit. Is it scientific to say that gender is a feeling and deny that it is a biological reality? In 2015, Rachel Dolezal was exposed as a fraud because she claimed she was African even though her parents were white. Dolezal even became a local leader in the NAACP until people started thinking scientifically. She told reporters that she, quote, identified as black even though her parents were white. Dolezal was disgraced. Everyone knows that genetics determine ethnicity, not feelings. Well, maybe not everyone, certainly not the president of the United States. Here's an embarrassing question. Why don't we apply the same scientific standard to gender? That, dear friends, is the question of the day. Our country is on the road to madness. Is it demons? Sheer stupidity? Moral blindness? Divine judgment? Or all of the above? Off limits to Republicans? Well, a GOP campaign worker wearing a DeSantis hat is attacked, left with a broken jaw and needing surgery. A campaign canvasser for U.S. Senator Marco Rubio, Republican from Florida, was left with a broken jaw, internal bleeding, needing surgery, and a message to share. 
Republicans aren't allowed in this neighborhood. In his official statement, Rubio said, Last night, one of our canvassers wearing my T-shirt and a DeSantis hat was brutally attacked by four animals who told him Republicans weren't allowed in their neighborhood. The attack comes in the midst of a very intense campaign by Democrats to mischaracterize Republicans as a threat to America. President Biden recently labeled conservative people as, quote, semi-fascist. He recently scolded MAGA Republicans in a Sunday interview on MSNBC and has labeled them as extremists in many of his appearances around the country. The Republican National Committee's response to Biden was, quote, Joe Biden's wretched attacks on millions of Americans has fueled attacks on pregnancy centers, Republican offices, and an assassination attempt on a Supreme Court justice. Now for the good news. A 16-year-old Iranian schoolgirl was beaten to death for refusing to sing a pro-Ayatollah Ali Khamenei anthem. Courageous schoolgirls have emerged as a powerful force in Iran after videos went viral of classrooms of girls throwing their hijabs in the air, taking down pictures of Iranian leaders, and shouting anti-regime slogans. Iranian authorities forced their way into classrooms, violently arresting schoolgirls and firing tear gas into buildings. Now, somebody is thinking, Pastor Larry, you said you had some good news. Well, Christianity is growing in Iran in leaps and bounds as it is in all brutal dictatorships like communist China. Hearts are hungry for love, meaning, and purpose. Matthew 24, 14 says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Jesus is coming, friends, and he's not coming to throw his hijab in the air. So my question to you, is he your personal savior? Have you asked him to come into your heart to transform you, to make you a new creation in Jesus Christ? That's the answer. That's the bottom line.